day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel. And today we're talking about three stocks that are under $10 that you may want to dip your toes in a bit. Three stocks that I've looked at and I'm either investing in currently or I would potentially think about investing in them myself if I didn't have money going in a lot of other places right now. So I try to pick out three stocks under $10 and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I'll go through all three of those stocks and the reasons why I kind of like them and whatnot the reasons why they might be worth kind of investing in and you guys can decide for yourselves you know does that sound like a good stock or not and you guys i just want to warn you stocks under ten dollars are usually under ten dollars for a reason usually management did screw ups or they just have a bad business model something usually stocks that are under ten dollars deserve to be under ten dollars but sometimes some gems can be found under that ten dollar range and they can grow into great big companies and prove themselves over time so let's go ahead and get into this now the number one stock we're talking about I'm not going to spend the most amount of time on it because it's actually a stock I talk about a ton on this channel and I talk about it on the three stocks to buy because it's the stock I've been buying the most over the last six, seven, eight months or whatnot. It's GoPro, otherwise known as GoBroke on this channel. And GoPro closed out today at $9.91, so it's just barely under that $10 range. They deserve to honestly be in the $10 range because management has screwed up so many times within the past year, year and a half, all the way back from the Hero 4 session launch and pricing that way too aggressively, not putting marketing behind that. And then they just didn't release flagship products last year before the Christmas period. That was a huge screw up. Then they screwed up the Hero 5 launch by not making nearly enough cameras. They had some type of supply issue. They screwed that up. And then to top it all off, the Karma drone, they screwed up that launch. And then they had to recall the few drones that they did actually make and get out there. They had to recall it. And who knows when those drones will be on the market. Might be on the market in December. They might be on the market until 2017. We don't know. So management has screwed up so many times that it's hurt so many investors that a lot of people that were investing in GoPro or, or GoPro, they aren't even in, in, invested anymore. And they're not interested in the stock at all because of management. Personally, I'm still a buyer of GoPro. I might be a little crazy in the head, I know. But I believe that despite management's incompetence, which they are very freaking incompetent over there, let's be honest with ourselves. You don't screw up that many times without being extremely incompetent. I wish Nick Woodman would watch this video because it's amazing how incompetent they are over there. But I'm still a buyer because regardless of management, I believe they're going to have a strong growth year beginning right in the quarter we're actually in right now, which will not be recorded until about late January, early February. I believe that will show great growth year over year. I believe 1Q will show phenomenal, amazing growth year over year. And I believe that will just carry through the entire year. And so the narrative on GoPro, Go Broke will go from, you know, this is a declining business model to, okay, they're back to growth. And then the story will become, okay, how much are they actually going to grow in the future? And not so much as right now, which has just been, they've shown just down numbers for a year and a half or a year at least now. And when you're showing down, down numbers, your just story is like, okay, where's your stock going to zero? Are you going bankrupt? So that the story, I believe, again, will, you know, change and will begin to, you know, get back to the growth story. So that's the number one stock. Next stock up we have we're talking about today is FRPT, a company called Fresh Pet. If you guys have a pet, you may have heard of this. I don't know. It's in a ton of major grocery stores and a ton of major places like Target and whatnot. They have refrigerated dog food sections and the food's supposed to be much more high quality, almost high quality enough where if you were a human, you could actually eat it and it wouldn't be that bad for you. I've actually seen the CEO on Mad Money Show on CNBC. One time he ate a piece of the dog food, the fresh pet dog food. So that is what their business model is. And it's about serving fresh, fresh dog food. That's supposed to be really good. It's more, much more expensive than regular dog food. No doubt about it. But people that supposed, supposedly care about their pets more buy this type of food and not just care about their pets more but they have a lot more money to spend because buying your dog or cat or whatnot that kind of food it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination it's very expensive so that's the type of business they're in and you got to ask yourself 
is a type of business that's going to keep expanding. It kind of goes off the whole, you know, like the whole foods premise, you know, of, of humans, you know, us trying to eat healthier and be healthier and caring about where our food comes from, those kinds of things. Well, if you care about yourself, maybe you start to care about your dog and your cat in that way. And then maybe you start to move toward a company like Fresh Pet that maybe makes better meats and those kinds of things for your dogs or cats. So that's the type of customer they're trying to attract, more affluent people that, you know, want to try to give their dog or cat the best of the world. That's what Fresh Pet is. Now, let's look at their financials. They have had phenomenal growth here. We had $63 million in revenue in 2013. Last year, they did $116 million in revenue. So up almost, you know, what, 90 to 100% over in two-year period. That's very impressive revenue growth. And we look at their net income, it's getting better. They only lost a little less than $4 million. So the question is, are they about to turn profitable now? And so if you're betting on Fresh Pet, you're basically betting that, okay, this is a stock that's going to rise substantially over time if they can become profitable, very profitable that is. And if this trend of people trying to have their dogs and cats eat healthier continues to move upward. So that is what you're trying to bet on if you want to you know, invest in Fresh Pet. Let's look at their balance sheet. Balance sheet, a very solid balance sheet. $8 million in cash, $3 million in short-term investments, no long-term investments, no long-term debt, no short-term debt. Not huge numbers on that balance sheet because it's not a very big company. So good balance sheet overall. So this stock I look at and I say, you know, am I investing in it currently? No. Will I be investing in it currently? Probably not because I'm invested in other companies I like more. But I, you know, if I didn't have those other companies, I would definitely stick my toes in this one because it's, a, it's got a great balance sheet. It's growing. It's on the verge of becoming profitable. And I see that trend of, you know, people trying to feed their cats and dogs healthier things. I see that as a trend that will just get bigger as time goes on. So for that reason, I like that one. Last one up we have today is Groupon. This is actually an under $5 stock. It's at $3.98 closed at today. A market cap of about $2 billion. If you guys do not know what Groupon is, it is basically a deal type company that you buy deals from. You see here on the front page is two. This is a great deal, by the way. I bought this deal myself when I looked at it. Two free pizzas with a $25 gift card for $25. That's freaking phenomenal for Papa John's. I love Papa John's. I saw this deal when I was just getting ready for the video. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm going to buy that. That's a phenomenal deal. So Groupon is a deals website. Their big push right now in the company, they're trying to push to expand local deals. So like your mom and pop Mexican restaurant, right? They try to push deals through Groupon and whatnot, try to get those businesses to come online because that's where the huge potential is. Coupons for, you know, local restaurants, local bars, all those kinds of things, local retail shops, the, you know, the things that you usually get flyers in the mail for, maybe start going through Groupon and Groupon gets those little small exchanges for each one of those. And Groupon's business could grow substantially if they can grow that business. So that's what Groupon's focused on now. And if you're you're betting on Groupon, you're investing in Groupon, you're basically investing that the premise of this whole deal type, you know, thing is just a thing that's gonna expand more over time. I see it not going away because honestly, people like myself see a deal like that with the Papa John's and like, hell yeah, I'm gonna buy that. And a lot of people do that. So the question is how much growth will I have in it? Now the stock, by the way, it dropped so much, you know, down to where it's at now because it was a huge growth company. You know, it was expected to grow monster and then the growth stopped. The growth stopped and that's when the stock just got hammered and hammered and hammered. And this year it was already down to like $2 a share. So this one had really been hammered. Let's look at that, that income statement. As you can see, the income statement here, you can see that growth stop. It went from $2.5 billion in 2013 to over $3 billion in 2014, and then only $3.1 billion last year. So you can see the growth really stopped in revenue. However, however, they did eke out a, a profit last year, a net income of $20 million there. So that uh, that's a positive sign, you know, maybe they can become profitable, they're, they're right on that edge right now, or are they going to become very unprofitable again, or are they going to move to become more and more profitable now that they're focusing their business more? That is something that remains to be seen. Let's look at that balance sheet. $850 million in cash, that's a ton of money. They got a, um, $178 million in long-term investments. They have no short-term investments. They have long-term debt of nothing. They have short-term slash current long-term debt of $800 million. 
Overall, that's a that's a decent balance sheet. It's not a good balance sheet. Certainly not a great balance sheet. It's a decent balance sheet there. They have certainly a lot more cash on hand with the investments than they do debt. That's a positive sign. So a Groupon, I look at it and I'm like, is that something I would be buying right now? Probably not once again, but but if I you know didn't have a lot of other stocks I was invested in right now, I might look at that one and say, you know, I don't see the I think I think the deal business is just gonna get more popular as time goes on. I think pushing to local, if they can find a way to do that easy, where if you're a local restaurant or whatnot, you can go on to Groupon and easily set up your deal and it makes financial sense for you and you can track it, things like that. If that Groupon can do that. Groupon will have a huge success there, in my opinion, in the whole physical coupon thing where you get the coupon flyers in the mail. That will slowly kind of fade out if Groupon can be successful at that. If they can, they will have a lot of a lot of profits, in my opinion, on their hands. If they can't, then we'll see what happens. So those are the three stocks we talked about today, guys. Go Broke number one, Fresh Pet number two, and number three, Groupon. Let me know in the comment section if you guys will be buying any of these stocks. If you're currently buying any of these stocks, let me just know what your opinion is on these companies and their business model. I would love to hear from you guys in, on your opinion, basically. If you're watching this and you have not subscribed, you may want to. I talk a ton about the stock market, just like we did today. I talk about entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur. I give entrepreneur type tips. And we also talk personal finance almost every single week. Thank you for watching, guys, and have a great day.